Steve, it's been a few weeks since we sat down and spoke about pre-season and your, your aims and goals for what you wanted the group to do. Several weeks on, looking back on the first stage of pre-season, how do you think it's gone? Yeah, I think it's um, it's gone really well and uh, in and around the group's learning, in and around the skills and the extras and sort of the recovery processes and how hard they have worked. And I think, obviously, you always think pre-season going really well, but we need to get into games now to really test um, sort of our new defensive ph philosophies in particular, some of our, the skills we've been working on and under pressure. So it's something that's we get to the point now where we really want to try this. And obviously, going up against Leicester, you would be trying against one of the best teams about. Over this last period of time in the in the early stages of pre-season, has there been a particular focus on anything, any certain areas at all? Anything you've been doing different? Yeah, I think obviously with Brad coming in, there's been a real focus on on OD, um, spending a lot more time in around that, but. Again, we've been the boys have been working really hard, and it's been six day, five day weeks from, and in the fact of there's been a hell of a lot of skills going on, and in particular we're looking at well right across the board, but putting a little bit more pressure on on our front five. Obviously, there's a big set piece focus, but being better rugby players, the ability to catch, keep square, and around the ball carries and make decisions. So there's been a real focus on that as well, but there's been a primary role in around getting up the speed of Brad's Brad's area in around, in around the D, which has been really exciting and how the boys are really bought into it. How much of a challenge is it? It's something we talk about every year, but integrating boys coming in at different times. You've had under-20s, you had internationals, but NDCs who are being treated a little bit differently again in terms of their rest time. You know, some players like Alan Wynn and Biggs who've put in so much game time over the last year needing a bit more yeah. management. How difficult is it to prepare for the new season and to work in pre-season under those restrictions? I, obviously, it, it hinders you a little bit, but it is what it is. We've just got to work it out. And I think we, I think, the good thing is around, like obviously Rory having a full season last year. Like obviously, if BD wasn't banned, you'd be in more control with Bradley's coming back. Um, so it's it is it, it does hinder you a little bit, but it is it is we understand what it is from a long time out. Like obviously, we had the sort of player plans and understanding the NDCs the back end of last season, so we've had time to prepare. Um, obviously, I'm coming back at different times at all at different stages, like the 20s and around. Need to get them into a certain base of conditioning before we can bring them back in and up to speed with the group that's been here for sort of five weeks before them. But that is part that goes into the part of the planning and obviously where they come back and progressions. But it does put a little bit of strain on you, in particular when you you pick up a couple of bumps in certain areas where we probably a little bit of light. Then it does um, put a lot of load in around some of the individuals through this part of the season. But ultimately, it is what it is, and we, we've just got to find a, find a way through it. So looking ahead then to the fixtures we've got coming up ahead of the new season, and in particular in the first instance Leicester with the video on Friday night, when you're selecting for that game, it's probably a complex process because you're looking with one eye on September the 2nd and Zebra at the Liberty, yep. but the other eye on where you're, at, where you're at today in terms of individual players, their conditioning, what time they've returned back into pre-season yep. training, where players... A particular case of a lot of players actually coming back from injury as well. So we're taking account where they're ready to be thrown straight back into it. It's probably a complex process. Yeah, it is. It is in some aspects, and obviously you've got to be boys have got to be physically prepared to play. Probably some of the twenties boys are not quite ready physically for this weekend. They'd probably be okay for Belgium away, and then obviously you've got some boys are still away, and even the the, the Rodri Jones, the Eli Walkers, they have come back from senior tour. They've been in two to three weeks now, but probably this weekend will be a, a week too early for them to start getting proper game time, whereas the other, the rest of the group who've been here for eight weeks are physically prepared to do the work in around Leicester. And again, you mentioned sort of the return to play well, guys. It's managing load then. Obviously, Tyler's coming back off a real poor year for him um, injury-wise. So it's, again, you can't be going straight from nothing to 80 minutes against... Um, Leicester. Then you've got Lloyd Ashley coming back off a, off a big injury, so you've got to manage loads and building up. And like you said, it's all, it's all geared to be prepared for zebras in, in the first round. And there's still sort of three, four weeks ready uh, before that point. But it's making sure we're practicing, we're getting people physically ready, and making sure we don't rush people back into it just to beat Leicester. It's about being prepared for the zebras, the Cornux, and um, the Trevisas, the first round of three games. You look at the last two pre-seasons, we played Saracens in London, contrasting fortunes in the two games. Yeah. A heavy defeat two years ago, followed by a run to the semi-finals. Yeah. A big win last summer, followed by what was obviously a disappointing season all round. I think that, in a nutshell, highlights why you 
treat pre-season fixtures a little bit differently than you would a normal game. But what do you want to get out from these next few weekends? Yeah, I think it's about obviously physically being prepared for the season, but ultimately now it's going to be about it's going to be interesting less the testing of D because um, the boys are really brought into Brad and it's been great to have that new voice and just his energy and his, his him just being around the environment, looking at through uh, looking at the game and through a different set of eyes and he's been to some good environments at Bath and Wasps has been awesome just to chat with him but obviously testing that against Leicester is going to be great because we can do it in training but then when it gets into that real intensive battle the lungs are burning and obviously the physical contest can we keep to our structure and around the way we've been working but again it's 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 going to be a good learning point for us to take into Belgium then the, the following Leicester game then into Zebra so it's, it's definitely a learning process ultimately we we prefer to win games but as you said it's about certain objectives where we need to be and what we need to be going forward is is the key and obviously trialing out some of the new sort of combinations and around certain things has been some like we've had good pre-seasons from Nicky Smith Gareth Thomas um, it's been outstanding to see those guys come in and I think they've kicked on and it was so it was a real sore point in around the back end of the season as it was with supporters and it was just a lot of reflecting and looking at ourselves but it's something the boys have really worked hard. And looking at the squad, recruitment terms, we've added Kieran Fonatia to the squad, he'll be in yeah. in October. Yeah. We've got Roger Jones, Hugo Staffson and Bradley Davis. Yeah. Are, are you happy with that quartet? Yeah, definitely. I think they're all for different reasons as well. I think Kieran obviously is... We, we felt we were a number light in around the centres and Kieran offers a real point of difference. He's a physical lad and he's done really well for, for the Crusaders. He's had, he's had a good tournament, so we're excited about getting him in because um, I think he'll be a, a little bit of a point of difference. And also, it's not then about Josh playing, trying to play every game of the year and there'll be a little bit more competition. It's obviously bitterly disappointing about Owen because we did feel with Owen, Ben, Josh, Becky, young Joe Thomas and Kieran, we'd have good bit of depth there and you, you can challenge it's a real competition so it's obviously a bit of blowing around Owen for him personally as well Gus obviously coming in experience wise and I think he's been a good addition and he's been around the block and understands what is needed whether you're in a match day squad if you're not in a match day squad how you need to recover what your needs are in around the training group and then Rodri it's great to have him in he's probably not quite ready for Leicester he's not too far away but He's in the training environment. He's starting to, like you can see. Not only is it he's a huge man. Um, he's a real good rugby player, and obviously the set piece is going to be the key focus for him. And if we get that bit right, then I think we've got a real asset. And Bradley. Yeah, Bradley is coming back, and again he's um, building back up from coming home from New Zealand around his knee, but he's he's tracking pretty well. Um, probably won't be available for any of the pre-season games, but we, we, I think he's on track um, for the for probably the round one or two and he's progressing, fitting and nice, he's got a good sense of movement and again he's come from a different club, Wasp, different outlook, he's been away, experienced different things and it's great for now Rory's the Adam Beards, not only to have Alan Wynn around, Bradley's gone and done some different experiences so there's great learning for those boys and Lloyd Ashley who is week in week out we've got five really good second rows there that I think there's a good balance in around age experience and there's, there's a lot of big men there too and it'd be remiss of me not to give a mention to Rob McCusker who turned up with Landarcy on Tuesday yeah. as a new addition and a short term contract uh, what's the thinking behind that one? Yeah it's um, uh, it's obviously we've got Lids and Kingy coming back and they're not too far away but they're not in and around and ready to play yet um, Beerman had a bit of a stub of the toe in, in the week so he's probably missed maybe two games young Josh Cole obviously it's, it's, a, it's a big ask for him but again he had a, a, a slight bump on uh, Monday which would hopefully still be involved in around Leicester but we're waiting and seeing and then Baker obviously him coming back from his injury is not an 80 minute performance in him yet so we're just covering our bases and making sure we manage everyone correctly there's no point playing sort of bakes for 80 minutes if we can help it and risking him because a real focus is, is ready for zebras and just to sum up now looking at the next few weeks and the next few months sense of optimism ahead of the new season and for a better year in the Pro 12 and perhaps to have an interesting season in the Challenge Cup as well yeah it's it's got to be better than it was last year without any shadow of a doubt and I know there's 
a lot, some excuses you going know, behind, but ultimately it's not what we're about. It wasn't good enough, and in particular the start really hurt us to catch it up. We had some really good moments in our own Europe, and I think we've got to push on from those and make sure that how important it is to represent the Ospreys and where we need to be. And the the, the start is is a real key focus for us in around making sure we get off to a start. We're not chasing things from day one, but I think out the last year as well, we've got probably a deeper squad now. And even I know there's a, there's a lot of injuries floating around, but there are only bumps and bruises apart from the big ones with Owen and Sam, which, which are disappointments. But Sam, luckily with, with the Sam injury, we've got the likes of Tips who, who will be working his way back. Probably, again, not this weekend, but you've got Tips, we've got Kingy, we've got Lids, you've got Baker. We've got Beerman, you've got Tyler, who's probably going to help us out in the second row. We don't see him as a long-term second row, but needs must. At this minute in time, he's probably going to play there. So the depth we grow in, and Ollie Cracknell coming through last year, like Sam, I feel, I know we haven't probably made um, a hell of a lot of signings, but I feel like Underhill and Cracknell and Rory for this season, a year down the line, they are great additions to a group, and like, like Scott Orton. So I feel... We're in a good place. I think there'll be more room to manage people, and hopefully, like like Lloyd Ashley last year in the World Cup, year ends up playing week in, week out because there is no one else to play at some point. So it's something that hopefully we can manage certain players a little bit better, keep us fresh, and so then hopefully we get the back end of competitions. We've got the best team on the field. Yeah.